kiss for you. Real quick before the video starts, I have a video out on my second channel about the Roblox report that just came out uh, earlier today talking about, you know, the Roblox pedophilia problem as well as lying to investors. So if you want to check that out, uh, that'll be up on the second channel, hopefully by the time you see this. Okay. Now, what I want to talk about today is Apple's ecosystem and explaining Apple's ecosystem. Now, three things I want to talk about with this one. Features, easy use, and connections. First one, obviously, being features. Apple's ecosystem and the reason people talk about it so much is because of its interconnect ability and interoperability with various different devices. You have, you have things like MagSafe. That's an Apple ecosystem thing, right? Being able to have a wallet or a, a different case or a charger on the back of your phone that other people wouldn't be able to do if they didn't have an iPhone, that kind of thing. So that's obviously one of the features and you can see that via the accessories. The other thing in terms of features is what it lets you do when you have more of them. Specific features uh, and stuff can include uh, having an iPad and having an, I, uh, an iMac or a, a MacBook Pro or a laptop and being able to use your iPad as a secondary display for your Mac, being able to transfer things over, use it as a secondary display and since it's a touch screen and the Mac isn't, you're able to you know, draw with it or do uh, photo editing or anything like that. That's a feature, it used to be called Sidecar. Uh, in fact, I think it still is Sidecar. It's just rebranded and that's your ability to use the iPad as a secondary display. Similarly, they allowed you to use your iPhone as a camera. Uh, that was a recent update uh, in, in the recent iOS update, and they basically let you use instead of the camera that would be on your, your Mac or something, you're able to use the one that's like attached to your phone. And obviously it's a better camera, so it's gonna look better. And you can do that and have that be pretty interesting through things like FaceTime and I think some other third party apps, but that's kind of a similar aspect. Using your iPad as a secondary display or your phone as an extra camera or a better camera, is obviously a benefit and that's part of the Apple ecosystem. You won't be able to do that if you didn't have both a Mac and an iPad. Similar thing, the universal clipboard. This is a feature that lets you copy and paste between devices. So if you have both of them on and both of them are kind of like active and not sleep or anything, you can copy on, for example, your iPad and paste it on your iMac. You can copy from your iMac, paste it on your iPhone, all that. That's called universal clipboard and it tells you how to do that right there. Universal Clipboard is not always available and there are some things that it won't work with, but a lot of the time, as long as those two things are on, it'll let you do that. Name Drop is another pretty cool thing they introduced uh, when they introduced the W2, U2 chip, whatever the one that allows uh, wideband communication. You can tap your phone next to someone else's phone and it'll share contact information. It'll like wah, 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 and share contact information. You get this little pop-up you can do that. It's pretty cool, right? Uh, you can also do this with Wi-Fi passwords and other things. So if you're connected to Wi-Fi, uh, for example, and your friend isn't, but they have an iPhone and you're in their contacts, you can tap the phone together and they'll automatically share Wi-Fi passwords without you needing to do anything. So that's pretty cool. Connection between people, we have AirDrop, which for a long time was a very, my personal favorite feature. Ability to select AirDrop, photo, photo to contact or someone not in your contact, except they get them transferred. Immediately, don't have to send an email, don't have to send a media fire link or anything like that. They just immediately transfer. This is a very good feature. Uh, Samsung eventually got it, which I will talk about in a second, but uh, it didn't work that well. So AirDrop was a really very good feature. It was quick, it was easy, it worked most of the time. Like it was just very good and it could go between all the devices, not just iPhones. That was very nice. Those features are really starting to, you know, separate them from other things. You might not need a secondary display, but copy and paste would be useful. You might not use copy and paste, but name drop would be good or Wi-Fi would be nice. It would be great to have be able to transfer things easily if you're not using a shared messaging platform like WhatsApp, you can do that through AirDrop. You also have things like Apple TV, right? Apple TV and TV Plus are not available on Android phones or Android TV operating systems. And so if you want that uh, experience in this content, you're gonna need to get that. But you also get that with uh, any Apple purchase. A lot of the time they'll include three to five to a year of Apple TV Plus or Fitness Plus included, right? So that's pretty good. And that's obviously a thing that's not really so much an eco, like an integration, but more of an ecosystem. I want services. I want Apple Arcade. I like some of the stuff Apple Arcade is doing. I need an iPhone or an Apple TV box set, right? To do that. The moment you get an iPhone, now what can you do? Uh, you can use it again with your Mac. If you don't have a Mac, you can use it with your iPad. You can copy and paste across things, right? Even if you don't and you just have an iPhone, you can participate in things like name drop and airdrop. You also then have access to Apple TV and maybe you can even get some free Apple TV. So even if you just have one thing, an iPhone, you can start doing stuff. Even if you have an iPad, you can start doing stuff. 
And, and so that's, I think, a really important point. Obviously, it's going to be better if you have more of it, but you can basically start with any one of them and start having a good time, right? And start uh, seeing the benefits that these provide. Uh, and that kind of brings me to the point of, okay, well, what's the alternative? You're in that, you're in this ecosystem, you, you like all the features that the ecosystem has, maybe you're not using some of them, but you're using others. If you're trying to switch out of that ecosystem, it becomes very difficult. I, for example, had an iPhone and a, a MacBook. The feature I lost was AirDrop. Every other feature I didn't really use that much. Uh, my Both of the devices weren't always on, so I couldn't really use NameDrop or copy and paste, and so I mainly used AirDrop. When trying to find a replacement for AirDrop, which is the one thing I use when I switched to my Samsung phone, I was like, okay, I want to do AirDrop and for my Mac. Well, wasn't able to do that. I had to go through Google Drive. They eventually did, uh, introduced something called QuickShare. Now, QuickShare has been a thing for a while, but it was only between Galaxy devices. Pretty useless. But now I can just go to QuickShare and there's a QuickShare app that you can download for Windows and it pops up like this and it shows my computer and it shows nearby devices and I can basically quick share uh, anything and it's pretty similar to uh, you know, how other things like this would work. So I'll do an example right here on my phone. I'll go to files. I'll just share the recent image right here. There we go. And then I'll share it with quick share. I'll share it here. It should pop up right there, my computer and I'm connecting it. Now you'll, unfortunately, the annoying thing is similar to what AirDrop is, right? It's preparing, it's doing that. You have to hit accept, which, uh, or in this case, I don't have to hit accept and it, there it is, right? It, it opens up there, which, which is very nice. But uh, most of the time you have to hit accept if you're not like actively, like directly uh, as close as I am, or maybe it's not in the contact, but that's how it works. It's pretty simple to set up. Once it's set up, the benefit to having it on iPhone is it's already set up for you. You don't have to worry about anything. You're, you're kind of just like, it's an automatic uh, thing that everything has installed. You don't have to go to the Samsung website, download QuickShare, set it up and log into your Samsung account, which requires a separate app for Samsung account, just to log in, just to be able to use QuickShare. So that's obviously a, a very useful thing now, but it does take a lot to set up and there's not a bunch of information on how to set it up. It's also not available on Mac. So if you want to be able to do that on Mac, too bad. The feature set there isn't very useful to as many people. And so we have that. The other thing that, you know, Samsung tries to do is gallery, uh, which backs up to Samsung Cloud. See how all these things get kind of ridiculous? Like the reason it works so well with Apple is because you're already using uh, iCloud to store things like your photos. Anything, anything I take with my camera and my Samsung phone goes to gallery, but it doesn't back up to my Samsung Cloud. I'd have to manually sign into my Samsung Cloud and ask it to back up the photos in my gallery in order to do that, because most of the time it doesn't, right? It's a lot of the time just used for like backup and, and syncing across devices, which I don't have more than one Galaxy device, so it's never going to do that. But they say, hey, you can, you know, back up everything from your gallery, similar to what, uh, you know, the Pixel does. Well, it doesn't, and it definitely doesn't do it, and so I never end up using gallery. I mainly just go to files or, or share it to like Google Photos or something like that instead of having to go through gallery and Samsung cloud, because it's just not something even as a Samsung user that I'm really kind of into or, or care about that much. And so you really see this transition between like useful features that you couldn't see anywhere else and shoddily put together extensions of what Apple's trying to do with stuff like QuickShare that aren't even fully featured, right? For the longest time, this was only available on Galaxy devices and then eventually made its way to Windows with a little bit of, of funky stuff. It's still not on Mac. It's still not on, you know, Apple devices in any capacity. And so you can't use it if you wanted to. And so it's not really much of an ecosystem as an additional feature we slapped together. Similar Samsung Cloud and Gallery and any other thing that say like the quick quick pair right for Samsung Buds and stuff. It's all pretty limited to very specific use cases that Apple can kind of avoid just because of how many things they introduce. There's a lot of these, right? And I could keep going, I could be list, listing them, but there's a lot of them and a lot of them are very useful. And for Samsung's side, the most use I got at Samsung Cloud was being able when I was communicating with people that were on you know iPhones uh, for messages being able to send photos and stuff easier because I couldn't, like I physically couldn't send uh, uh, photos and stuff or videos because they just like won't come out right. And so I had to go and Samsung Cloud share it so that they'd click on a link, which would download it to their phone. It was automatic, it wasn't complicated, but it was another step. I had to click on that, 
upload to the cloud and would upload it temporarily to the cloud and they click on the link and see the link and then they'd have to go into the image and so it was just more and if they wanted to download that you had to click on go back and click the download button like it was a solution and to me it worked well but to them it was still annoying and so that was the best case scenario for samsung cloud was this just reliance on this random uh use case that i had because i was talking to someone with an iphone and it was not very convenient to send photos and videos and things that's a pretty u.s problem because other countries use like whatsapp or something and don't have that issue but I think that also goes to show, like, since our reliance is on the defaults in the U.S., having things that interoperate with each other, like Apple does, is very useful. The last thing I'll say is, no matter how useful it may seem that all these things are, and they are pretty useful, my grandmother, which has an iMac, a Apple Watch, an iPhone, and an iPad, and just got, recently got a new iPad and new iPhone, has had a horrible time with trying to get some of these features to work because when you have more devices than they expect you to do, especially the watch, uh, you get some issues with pairing, with connectivity, with uh, phone numbers and stuff. And some of that could be explained by cell stuff, right? Cell service. A lot of it has to do with especially the Apple Watch and we'll talk about that now. Uh, the Apple Watch is kind of weird because they say, oh, look at all these health things it can do. The issue with the Apple Watch has been pretty consistently it is extremely hard to get things synced from the watch to the phone. One major issue that she was having in terms of syncing things was she would get notifications like spam notifications, right? From a bunch of things because you know, it's election season and all that. Uh, and she would get them on her iPad and then she'd get them on her watch. But because she would get them on her watch first, she might dismiss it. She might look at the watch or something else and then it wouldn't pop up on her iPad. Now that might be good for you or not, but the issue is she wants to get rid of it. And if she looks at it on her watch and it doesn't pop up on her iPad, uh, she can't get rid of it. She has to now go find it, right? A uh, similar thing happens when she gets it on her phone because it's mostly a phone thing. She gets it on her phone first and she'll try to get rid of it and it doesn't go away from her iPad. It syncs, it's like a forward. So like you'll get a message on your phone and it'll be like oh, blah, 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 right? And you don't want it, so you swipe it away. That will also show up on your iPad. But what it won't do is go away from your iPad when you get away from your iPhone. And so you'll have to do it twice. You'll have to get rid of from one and get rid of the other. And we tried everything. We tried forwarding it differently. We, you know, we tried uh, spam blockers on the phone. It didn't work. It would always go to both and it would only get rid of from one. So that kind of thing is like, is it, you know, connected? Is it easy to use? Yes. But when it's not useful, like it's spam, I don't want to have to go to multiple places to try and get rid of it. Every single time she gets a message, it doubles or even triples, right? Because she also gets it on her watch. So now she has three of the same one notification on three different devices here that she needs to get rid of from all three devices in order for it to really go away. So that's a very annoying thing that she doesn't like. And it's part of the ecosystem. It's part of dealing with the ecosystem and figuring out how things work and what, what does and doesn't work. And then you have other things that kind of don't work in the ecosystem, like the files app doesn't really work that well because uh, certain things like pages don't sync to the cloud. And so instead of being able to just seamlessly start something on pages, right? Uh, and pages is like Apple's like, like word processing thing. Instead of being able to start something on pages and then move it over to the, the iCloud, when she starts pages on like her iPad, for example, uh, and then tries to use it on her Mac, it's not there because it's actually saved locally. Even though everything else from photos and backups and all that are saved uh, digitally, like on the on the cloud, Pages isn't. And so she then has to go files and find it and then move it into her iCloud. And then she's able to use it from here if it's even saved correctly. So there's some issues there when it comes to, hey, look how seamless this is. And then some things like pages just aren't seamless at all. But I think overall, even with that complaint that I've seen, this uh, system here in this ecosystem, I think works uh, a lot better than other competitors' ecosystems. Even though this ecosystem seems amazing and it's like, oh, look at all these things you can do, there are issues, right? There's going to be things that because everything's seamless, some stuff just works a little too well that does it automatically without your input, right? So I think that's definitely something to be aware of, but I, I also think that overall, it works a lot better than other competitors. So hopefully that explained everything. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you're interested in content like this. Subscribe to my gaming channel to also check the Roblox uh, report that came out uh, a couple hours ago. And yeah, I'll see everyone in the next video.